my goodness, what the... What's up, what's up, what's up, YouTube? What's going on? It's been a long time. Got some things I want to show you. One of the things that uh, I really want to show you is this bad boy right here. Um, how much dope is too much dope, right? Pipe dope, that is, right? That, that's what we call this stuff right here. I'm going to show you some things, give you some of my experience. Now, I'm not a plumber, but I have been in the business of uh, uninstalling and installing appliances, gas ranges, refrigerators, water lines, things of that nature for the past uh, 30 years. So here's my two cents on that. All right, you guys ready? Let's show you guys a couple of tools, a couple of things uh, that you're going to come across whenever you have to hook up your gas appliance, whether it be a stove, a furnace, a uh, heater, a uh, water heater, anything of that type of nature. Uh, but if you take anything away from this video and don't watch from this point forward, just don't do this. Please, don't do this. This is ridiculous. This is a valve that goes on the back of the stove. So you go, you got one for the oven and one for the burners, or maybe this is the oven and this is the burners. I'm not too sure. But anyway, regulator, that's what it's called. It's called the regulator. And then you put on your fitting of choice. And then from this fitting, you put on your gas line, handy dandy gas line. And then that goes to your shutoff valve. So uh, that's basically what we're going to be talking about. And I really want to focus on how tight or how much of the dope goop, uh, whatever you product you want to use, how much of it should you really put on and how tight should it be? Because this is, this is just <laughs> ridiculous. This thing was so tight. That the, that the aluminum lines that came out of here, the, or copper, that came out of here and went into the stove were all bent up and kinked up. And the customer was wondering why they had a problem with gas. That's because uh, some DIYer, because I pray and I hope that this was not a plumber or someone with experience. And I have a special message for the person that did this. Yo mama. Let's get into these parts and pieces and see what it is that you need to make this successful. Let's go. All right, quickly looking at the table, I'm going to show you my favorite tools when it comes to uh, installing gas lines, gas fittings. These are Channel Lock brand. These things I use, been using, like I said, for the past 30 years. My dad used them, not these specific ones, but this brand uh, are awesome. Only bad part is after time from so much use and stress that start peeling, but they do sell a dip where you can re-dip them if you'd like. That's one thing that you can use, but if you notice, one of the things that people don't like, especially if you're a little OCD, is the teeth, right? Because when you're looking at the teeth and then you see your fitting, your fitting is smooth. So what ends up happening a lot is that when you use those channel locks, it'll tear up and it'll eat up the finish, but uh, it's in the back of the place. I mean. You're really not going to look at it. Some some people prefer to use these adjustables, right? And, and this this can be used as well, right? They got different size adjustables, right? And it all depends on on you. I would strongly recommend that you stay away from the cheapy cheapies, like Harbor Freight, because some of these are so cheap. When you put a lot of force, uh, they just open up. They just slip and strip, and they're no good. So. That's another thing. And if you want to use crescent wrenches, you can use crescent wrenches as well. Now, the fittings. The fittings, there's a couple of things you have to know about the fittings. Uh, they come in different sizes, right? Depending on the size pipe that you got or uh, depending on the uh, hole here that you got coming out from the back of the regulator or the pipe itself. So your gas line can be... Uh, half inch which you see here and or it could be three quarters which you see here so uh, obviously uh, you know you you have to find the right fitting right because if you got this one that's not going to work right so you'd have to get something like this little bell but that's not going to work right so then you got to get something like this and as you see that works great and that's what you can use uh, all these things are at the uh, Home Depot or whatever have you, and they're pretty easy to find. Um, Want to go over a couple of things that you can use. Again, this is, uh, we call this pipe dope. 
well, I want to roll the paper back. Let's get rid of the paper first. So it dries up a little bit, right? But after it dries up, you just peel away what's dry and you'll reveal the actual uh, pipe dope. And then you just put a couple lines on it like that, right? And that should be good enough, right? That should be good enough. Now, people get very scared or very leery or weary because it's gas, right? So some people will do this and then they'll take some type of tape, right? That's for... Uh, gas, uh, methane, butane, and then they'll wrap it around. It, it's Listen, it's not really necessary, but if you got to do that, just remember that the next guy that comes along and needs to remove this piece is going to hate you, right? He's going to hate you because you can't take it off. One, this thing is super over tight, and I'm going to show you how we're going to take this off by the end of the video. So if you stick around, you'll get to see this come off. Uh, I promise you, we're going to have to put it in a vise. We're going to use a monster monkey wrench, I call it. I don't even know if that's the right name for it, but we're going to use a monster monkey wrench to get this thing off. So stick around for the end of the video. We'll do that. Um, this is a great product. I like this. This is a Blue Monster. Nobody's paying for this video. Uh, I don't have any advertisers or anything like that. But this works great for natural gas, for methane. Uh, as long as it's not exceeding 1500 PSI, uh, this is great for threaded metal on pipe joints. Um, so you can use this, that'll work fine. So here's probably the setup that would work for you if you had half an inch pipe, right? And then you tighten that up and then always, always you want to, uh, turn on the gas. Once everything's hooked up, get some soapy water, spray it, make sure you don't see any bubbles. Uh, and that should be uh, sufficient. That should hold you. You should be good. Um, if you got three-quarter pipe, right? Now, this is... I shouldn't use that because that's water. We're not discussing water. Uh, we're talking gas. So here we go. Black pipe, right? That's how you could tell also the difference between a uh, gas pipe and a water pipe. Extra credit. Water pipe is normally galvanized. And gas is normally black. Black pipe. So you want to look for the black pipe, right? So you also have some compound thread. This will work nicely too. Uh, but again, this stuff does dry up and uh, it's hard to open up. Here we go. All right, so we got that open. This is, I wanna show you what it looks like. And I guess this is just something that, since I don't use much, it's pretty much dried up in here. But this stuff here, you, oh, there you go. As you can tell, it's a little watery, no big deal. You put that on, you get in there, and you want to use a little bit. Make sure you cover at least the first two rows of threads, right? You don't want a whole lot of this. Because as you tighten it, uh, it'll spread around. So that's basically what you're looking for there, right? You take your fitting. And always hand tighten them. It's always easier to get uh, hand tight. I like to go loose first. I go uh, left first and then right. And that helps find the correct thread to match it up so you don't cross thread. And then you put that on there. See that? As I tighten it up, it starts forming there. And then you start getting like a little, little gasket kind of it makes there. Right? And then you tighten that up. And then once you got it tight... Then you take your pliers to it. Um, it's really quick. It's always good also to use two pliers, right? So we'll put this on here like this, and then we'll put the other one. This is normally coming from the wall. You put it here, and then you just you just tighten that bad boy up, right? Now again, how much do you tighten it? Ah. Uh, once you feel that you can't turn it no more, just kind of give it a little bit, one more little pump. See, let's see where we, we're right there and just a little more and that's sufficient. That should be good enough. So everything that you put on the thread as you see it, it's starting to come out now. So it's a lot easier now because I'm showing you I'm not behind a stove. So you can do that. That method is good. Now here is probably one of my biggest pet peeves right you got the gas line and this is just to show you uh 
this three quarter inch we'll use that three quarter inch this goes here like this right that would be the pipe coming out of the wall and you got here and you got here so I want to show you guys something now I haven't broke this seal yet so this should be interesting let's see righty tighty lefty loosey so I'm gonna put it here that's gonna go down and this one goes up and we're gonna yeah see that's been on for a while Woo! that's a tight one right there now this is the part you want to be careful with because you can actually bust your knuckles pretty bad so let's get this corner <clears throat> wow that's on there this thing must be like welded but see here's here's where you break out the big guns right you break out the big guns get your little adjuster on there uh, let me see if i can put it on a table give it some torque baby <clears throat> Holy cow, this thing is rusted on there. It's got to be rust or pipe dope or somebody just put some... See, this is, this is the issue that I'm talking about. Some of you guys out there are making it very difficult for us to do something very easy. And I knew this was going to be a little bit of a challenge because I saw it. So we'll try to grip these two together now. And push together and nothing all right let's stop the video okay so this is not working so we're gonna get rid of that all right we're gonna take these off loosen them up get them out of the way and let me introduce you guys to the big guns all right when all else fails when you've lost your patience when you almost start saying cuss words you bring out the big guns ba bam now if i can't break this with these guys these things were not meant to be taken off but i doubt that so let's get that on there right and then you just got to do a little bit of adjusting uh, here we go right there we go up down i'm gonna have to stand up for this and there we go yes all right yes sir now i was hoping that this would happen because here's another issue now this gas line's from a different stove so whoever installed this on a gas stove i'm also going to send you a message yo mama too I thought you wouldn't get to see these till the end of the video, but you got to see them before the end. So there you go. Those are the big boys. Now, what's the problem? What's the issue? Why did that happen? One of two things. Rust, which is unbelievable uh, that it would happen. But I did have this sitting in the garage for a while. So it could be rust. But I am noticing a little residual there. Of maybe some pipe dope okay so on these flared fittings right it's a misconception a lot of people like to use pipe dope you know and I get it you you, you want to be safe you don't want your house to blow up all right so again these are the flared ends right the flared ends are flared for a reason see there's a difference you have the flared end and then you have the threaded end right so the flared end are flared because the inside of the gas line and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show this if you guys will be able to see it well but the inside is also flared you see that like a little collar in there let's see if I get a pen or something so I can point at it there we go so you see in there, it's a flared end. Now, can, can you tell me what will happen if you put pipe dope or tape and it ends up being on this flared end and then you go in here and you put it on, what's going to happen? Well, you're obviously going to have a leak because it's supposed to be a nice seal. You do not have to put Teflon tape, dope, uh, threaded compound, 
on the flared end fittings. Now, why do people do that though? I'll tell you why. Some people are too cheap to go out and buy a new gas line. I've run across this many a times in my field and the work that I do. And the customer says, no, nah, you know what? I'm going to use the same old gas line. Well, as a professional, oh, see, here you go. Yeah, you can even, I don't know if the camera could pick that up, but there's pipe dope in there. See that? That's no good. So in my profession, when a customer tells me they want me to use the same old gas line, that's when I tell them I can't do the job. I would rather lose money than have to go back because somebody's house blew up because there was a gas leak. Or I would hate to install this, do the soap test, and then again, it starts leaking. So uh, my advice to everyone who has a gas appliance, once you disconnect the gas line and once that seal is broken, go get a new one so you get a new seal and then the new seal and the new fitting uh, will form perfect. You'll have a good, nice and tight closure or seal, I should say, and you're good to go. Um, if you choose to use the old one because you want to save 20 bucks, 25 bucks, that's on you. Um, another big issue uh, that I see all the time is people use the wrong size gas line, wrong size fittings. Now this came off a 30 inch stove with four burners and an oven, right? That's what this is from. And, uh, they used a half inch gas line. Now this gas line, uh, I believe is five eighths. Um, and it's thicker these thicker gas lines. I use on the professional ranges that have six burners uh, An oven and I'll give you an example of that. Let me show you what I got here in my house I use this in my house. So this is the range in my house. I have six burners That's just an accessory sitting on top of two burners uh, have the oven but I always had this question right so I, I wouldn't use a skinny gas line on this but my question is, if every stove has a regulator, does it really matter what size gas line you use? Because the regulator is only going to allow X amount of gas to the unit, to each burner. So does it really matter? If I can get a professional to answer that in the comments or give me your opinion, what you think about that. Um, just want to show you this also, the flapper valve inside of it. So it allows gas to only flow in one direction, as you can see there. So if that gas line uh, ends up break breaking or kinking, or if there's a gas leak, the range catches on fire uh, because the pressure starts, uh, builds up, it, it closes. So it's not able to come back into the gas line, into the house. Uh, so if you want to throw one of these on, this actually goes on the shutoff valve side. Um, yeah, it goes on a shutoff valve side. So if you, you want to spend the extra money, if you're worried about gas leaks and your house blowing up, this is probably a, a, a good a good thing to have or install. Um, also, when you're working on a gas range, um, this is very important. Let's say you take the gas range off and you're not going to connect it for another couple days. Uh, use a use a cap, right? Use a cap. Be safe. Uh, you know they they look like this on their own. Just throw that or a plug. A plug would fit on the uh, on the inside if it was threaded. We're gonna go outside. We're gonna put this on a vise, and we're gonna take one of these big guys here, and we're gonna crack this open because I'm not gonna let this thing win. Again, if this is you, if this is what your gas connections look like your mama here's the setup it's in the vise you got the big guns right here on three uno dos tres ah, ah. i'm moving my whole cart i might have to get a stand on this thing all right i got a makeshift stand this is on my rolling cart that's why it's moving it's not on a bench all right let's go let's see if i can break this sucker loose oh man Dude, this thing is unbelievable. I can't believe the guy, who, person who did this. Urgh! All right, this ain't working. All right, I think I got it worked out. It's up against the wall.
goodness, man. Unbelievable. This is not... Oh, man. Would I like to meet the guy who did this? The person that did this? Oh, my goodness. What in the world? Look at that. This is so horribly done. Don't do this, guys. Thanks for watching my video. I'm glad you stuck around to the end. And remember, too much dope is too much dope. This is ridiculous. Just we got dope inside, pipe dope inside. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm out. Peace.